News over the weekend and uh, talked about uh, incessantly over the weekend embattled uh, UPenn President Liz McGill uh, resigning on Saturday. This after criticism of her testimony at that congressional hearing last week, which we talked a lot about on Squawk Box. She struggled to answer that question about whether calling for the genocide of Jews violated the college's rules. McGill stepping down as president, but will remain a tenured faculty member at the university's law school. Meantime, the chairman of Penn's board of trustees, uh, for those on Wall Street who know him, Scott Bach, also saying that he will step down. He, of course, had been supporting uh, her. She, he runs uh, Green Hill, the boutique uh, investment bank that's being taken over by Nomura at the moment. Uh, lots of questions uh, about, uh, frankly, what comes next. Uh, Harvard uh, having a board meeting, um, apparently reportedly just yesterday, that may be bleeding into today about its own, uh, its, its own president. Uh, similarly, there have been discussions uh, about uh, the president at MIT and how she responded. Uh, that board uh, has been very, very publicly supportive of her. Um, and then the even larger question about just what kind of, um, you know, culture has taken place uh, at these universities and, and sort of how deep uh, some of these issues run and how easy or very difficult generationally they may very well be to change. Yeah, I mean, this has kind of been a slow Role, we're kind of watching a, a, a train wreck to some extent to see what happened. I, I think a lot of people looked at that testimony before Congress as something that was um, almost a seminal moment in, in what was happening in all of this, and that's when you really saw the fear rise up. Um, if you've been watching uh, Bill Ackman, who has been so vocal about this and who has been, as I think as one person said, he went full-on activist. On, on these university presidents. Um, watching how that has played out, he was kind of going through all of this and was tweeting last night that Harvard was having a, a board meeting last night, too. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to see what happens. But I think it's been pretty eye-opening for somebody who hasn't been on a university campus in a while, in quite a while, to see what... I, I, my eyes were opened by some of this, to be, yeah. to, to be sure. Yeah. And the actual it, testimony seemed to be very much informed by specific legal framing of, yeah, you know, they're, they're under some liabilities, about. and it just didn't, and, and obviously it didn't, didn't sound apply. like humans yeah. when, they were, when they were testifying. You know, so much of this began, and, and Becky was at the table when it happened, when Mark Rowan, um, who runs Apollo, came, came and sat at, at Squawk Box. This was originally, I mean, this was, this was even before uh, what we saw happen on October 7th. This was about the palace originally at least in the context of the University of Pennsylvania, about uh, that, that um, Palestinian uh, literary festival and what was taking place there. And clearly that effort among the donors um, began then and, and only really ramped up. You also saw something, I mean, to put, maybe put it in a business context, you almost saw a bear hug kind of letter. Uh, they, that's what they would call it in sort of the takeover parlance, where you had late last week the board of the, the Wharton School, which is inside Pennsylvania, but is not yeah. an actual board that oversees the university, effectively write a letter to the board uh, saying that they wanted to start nominating people to, to that board and wanted her to resign. It was a very interesting sort of uh, complex. Well, we also saw, of course, the donations. And it came at the same time. I was going to say it was the same. It came exactly. at the same time. There was a $100 million donation to the Wharton School to a finance uh, right. building there or finance program there. Um, that was going to be revoked based on what that donor saw as rampant anti-Semitism and said it was a violation of the terms. Um, so a lot of pressure that came, and again, that pressure really ramped up after the testimony before Congress of those three university presidents.